Production maximization is an optimization problem regarding the production function and a constraint regarding production costs. Producers are therefore faced with the following problem. Faced with a set of possible production levels and a fixed budget, how to choose the level which maximizes their production. In its mathematical form, the production maximization problem can be formulated as an equation, where output Y is maximized subject to a budget constraint, such that the production cost P of producing Y units is lower or equal to the budget C the firm disposes for production. This general equation, however, is not usually useful by its own and is reformulated so it is closer to real-world examples. In this new equation, we see that the maximum production given by two factors of production, capital and labor, is subject to a budget constraint C, equal to the sum of the factors of production. As we can see, the units of capital K are multiplied by the interest rate R, at which the producer borrows this resource, while the units of labor L are multiplied by the wage W the producer pays each unit of workforce. This second formula is commonly used in order to facilitate its graphical representation. The x-axis, or horizontal axis, shows the amount of capital used in the production process, while the y-axis, or vertical axis, shows the amount of labor needed. The isoquant joins points with the same output level. The convexity of the curve shows how marginal productivity drops when a firm continuously gives more weight to only one factor of its production resources at the expense of decreasing the other factor of production. The firm's output level is increased the more upwards the production curve is set. Every firm wishes to have its production as high as possible. Therefore, the producer will choose a combination of inputs located on the highest possible isoquant. However, producers are also limited by budget constraints. This isocost line represents a budget constraint. Only input combinations that lie inside the budget constraint or on the isocost line are feasible. However, not all of them report the same output level. Therefore, firms should choose the one that reports them with the highest output level given the budgetary constraint. As we can see, firms are able to choose different isoquant lines. However, there is only one that meets both conditions of the highest output levels and budget compliance. This optimization solution will be located at the exact point where the isocost line is tangent to the production function. It must be noted that in the case shown, given the properties of the isocost and the production function, one and only one solution is possible. The combination of inputs that maximizes production while complying with the budgetary constraint will be composed of the equilibrium amount of capital and the equilibrium amount of labor. At this point, the marginal rate of technical substitution, which is equal to the slope of the isoquant, will be equal to the interest rate divided by the unitary wage paid which corresponds to the slope of the isocost line. This optimization problem must be seen as one of two sides of a coin, called production duality. Indeed, a similar but opposite analysis can be done solving the dual problem, the cost minimization problem.